You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coon hounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. This is your host, Coonhound Program Manager at UKC, Trevor Wade, and I'm joined by Mr. Alan Gingrich. Alan, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. How about you today? Good, good. Uh, we, we just got done with part one of our uh, UKC Coonhound World Championship uh, wrap-up, and it, it was a fun episode to record. It was. We could have talked about so much more. There's just a lot of good that came from this year's World Championship, but at some point you got to kind of wrap it up at the... Yeah, it was a good episode. And be sure a good one to talk about. So yeah, so re, uh, this is going to be part two. Be sure that you go back to part one and give that a listen. And uh, and I think that's going to be some pretty good content to you guys. But in this episode, we're going to talk to a lot of good people. We got a lot of good interviews to get to, and we're definitely going to get out some thank yous to uh, to our staff and our sponsors and partners uh, that made this event as smooth and as good as it is. But first, let's talk about our field reps a little bit. Yeah, they're a they're a big part of you mentioned smooth, you know, and we need officials and they do such a great job for us. You know, Tim Gilchrist from Iowa has been on for a good while. He was uh, one of the, the reps we had helping us. Curtis Sparks from North Carolina. Uh, Jamie Step from uh, West Virginia was there and um, uh, Philip Foster from South Carolina. He uh, led up the uh, the panel on Thursday night on the very first night, and he's one of them that I spoke to, and, uh, and just a good guy. And 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 I talked to Philip about being a field rep and what it is like uh, to work a world championship in an event like that. And here's Philip. Take a take a listen. Good afternoon, Philip. How are you today? Doing good, Alan. How are you? Good, good. Friday afternoon here at the World Championship, and. Man, Thursday we had a uh, had a good day for a hunt. The weather cooled off nicely, and what a what a good day! But a busy day and a long day. It was a great day, Alan. Sure was. Yeah. So we started with 104 dogs yesterday, and and uh, you're one of our field reps, and you were the chairperson for the panels we had last night. And how did how did everything go for you in your in your mind? For it last went night? really well, Alan. We had a few questions, but we mm-hmm. resolved them really really quick, and the hunters were really respectful went really good yeah you know uh uh had a lot of faith in you in in that position and 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 just want to commend you for the job you do for us and you always do and we really appreciate that man you really set the standard for uh dealing with things and we always appreciate your knowledge and and uh everything you put into educating yourself for one you know to to do that but uh, i noticed a couple questions that you had last night it didn't take you guys long but i always feel like you're good and fair and man uh Really appreciate you. I certainly appreciate the opportunity, Alan. I really enjoy it. Uh, working with the hunters is is great. Yeah. So uh, you've uh, you've is, how, what number of world hunt does this make? This for is you four working? for me. Four, four for you. Yep. Yeah. Sure is. Yep. What were the other ones you worked? I worked uh, Marshalltown, Iowa. Oh yeah, that was a long ride. For that you. was a trip right there. Yeah. yeah sure yeah. was. And then Peru for two years. Yeah. Peru, Indiana. Yeah. And then and here. here yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so uh, so four of them now, but uh, TOC is one you haven't done yet. No, yet. I haven't done that one yet. Looking forward to doing it. Yeah, though, maybe. well, maybe Trevor will get you on for that one. You'll like that one, too, right. I think. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, have you met anybody? Uh, you probably always meet some new folks in, in different parts. Always meet of, new folks, yeah. yeah, from different parts of the country. Enjoy talking to them. I've yeah. met so many great people in this sport. And, and the club here has done an excellent job. You can see by the, you know, Chad Smith and his guys, having their guide meetings out here, and you can tell they're putting a lot of effort into it. Yeah, I thought it was first class, the way they got the guides all together, had it organized, and it was just went off without a hitch. It was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you brought your wife Sharon with you Yeah, as well. Sharon always supports me. She's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's always good that you can bring her along and, and uh, just have her hanging out with us here and everything. So, yeah, hopefully yeah. you guys enjoy it as much as we do. Yeah, uh, we do, Alan. Yeah. We enjoy it. Well, I appreciate you stopping and sitting down with me here for a second. And thanks for everything you do, Philip. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Appreciate it. Here's an interview I got to do with one of our field reps, Jamie Eastep, when we talked about all things uh, UKC major events. Hope you enjoy this interview with Jamie. Jamie, how's it going, bud? Hey, we're doing well. We're sitting here on Friday and enjoying the weekend and then being a part of this. And it's always a fun one to come to. Yeah, you got up here Wednesday night. That I right? did. Yeah, yeah, probably 
8 o'clock here time, 9 o'clock West Virginia time, I think, something like that. What was the temperatures looking like then? L- warm. High 90s? Yeah, warm. I yeah. had worked a little bit Friday morning, so as I was driving down, I still had dress slacks and a shirt, and um, <laughs> I stopped and got gas about an hour up the road, and I called my wife and said, I'm sweating pumping gas, so this is uh, a little bit different back home. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, funny. Uh, we got here on Tuesday night and Wednesday also. It was uh, in the low hundreds and the high 90s. And then Thursday, once the hunters start rolling in, yesterday we had a beautiful day. Couldn't yeah. ask for a better day. Mid-70s, yeah. got down in the high 50s at night, I think. There was a good breeze all night. And, man, made it for a much better hunt last night, I yeah, think. Yeah, I heard a guy local here yesterday talking about he was still watering his garden. And I'm thinking, man, our gardens are done finished. And he's just <laughs> watering his. So a little bit different weather, but it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so this is probably your first. Uh, how long have you been a field rep with us, first off? A couple mm, years now? A couple years now. I did some things at some zones prior yeah. to becoming a field rep. But this is, I think, my probably my first, my second four year. Yeah. And so last year, you, you were at the World Championship there in Peru. Obviously, Drew made it through, mm-hmm. so you came. You helped us judge a little bit and then helped us with some live show stuff. But this is the first year that you're actually here on assignment yeah. and to be a part of our Master of Hounds panel. And so last night would have been the first uh, Thursday night round one. Obviously, I had 26 casts, and you were a part of our three-person yeah. Master of Hounds panel. Yeah. Uh, well, how was that experience last night? It was good. A lot of – I told a friend of mine this morning was asking me about it. We had – Several questions, maybe five or six, maybe a little more than that. But the impressive thing was is, and you got to kind of give credit to twofold. You got to give credit to your judges because it seemed like they they kept pretty good control of their cast. And then you got to give credit to the hunters of being very respectful. There was a couple of questions that actually the winners were changed, and there was some overruling of some decisions. Uh, but those hunters responded in a in a in a really good fashion. So it was good to see. Even where their moments could have been a little bit tension, hunters and judges all responded in a in a very good manner. So that was pretty impressive on that side. Yeah, we, yesterday through confirming entries early in the day, all the way through cast draws and through the night, all the way to the conclusion of the round one, probably the smoothest uh, round one night one of a world championship that I've had uh, that since I've been on on board. And you're right, quality uh, judges and. And just good sportsmanship by the entrance yeah. are probably a major part of that. And uh, I know you're going to be doing some different things this weekend, kind of uh, uh, different uh, facilities. You'll be helping with the show a little bit on Saturday, be helping with the live show some on Saturday night. So you're going to get the, a full uh, full yeah. gamut of uh, field rep responsibilities yeah. this weekend. Yeah, tonight, I, I uh, honestly, I Googled a place and I seen a big picture of a steak. So tonight where y'all are working, I'm going to go find uh, <laughs> that. And then I'll come back and hang uh, hang out. But no, I mean, it's just, I don't care what it is. I'm not sleeping when I'm here anyhow, so it's just fun to to do. I enjoy the show part, so it's going to be cool to work that tomorrow, not necessarily knowing what I'm doing just yet, but yeah. um, I enjoyed that aspect, and big props to everybody that shows dogs because it's really a, a strong part of what we do in Hounds. Yeah, it's a big, it's a part of everything that we embody at UKC, a dog that does more both in the field and in its in its avenue of yeah. competing and then also form and function and uh and a, a dog that's built right and can handle situations yeah last year up in peru was sitting there with some friends and getting to watch the whole show a little different aspect than autumn oaks autumn oaks show is just so long and then we're so busy as field reps at yeah. autumn oaks Coming in there and the way the format is set up for the finals, it was just kind of – it was quick. You didn't lose interest, and yeah. you still had the the top echelon of dogs there. And it was fun to watch. So I, when you guys told me in our meeting that I was doing that, honestly, I was going to be doing that anyhow. It didn't matter if I stayed up all night tonight <laughs> or what. So it was, uh, it was a win-win for me. I get to sleep and do that. So that was cool. Hey, now that you, you kind of mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, Autumn Oaks a little bit, that, that's interesting to me. You've now – you've worked Winter Classic for us, Autumn Oaks. You've obviously worked TOC and uh, and World Zones. Uh, you haven't been to the TOC finals yet, but yeah, hopefully we we'll get you. I've never got to Gold Spoon yet at uh, <laughs> no. TOC. That's my joke on that. I've never <laughs> got to eat from the Golden Spoon yet. So uh, <laughs> Yeah, we just had regular old plastic spoons you, here yesterday. For yeah, the World just finals, I, huh? 
Yeah, and, you know, we get a box lunch here and gold spoons at the TOC. <laughs> so maybe one day, you know, maybe yeah. one day. There so. we go. But, hey, out of the ones that you've worked, uh, Winter Classic Automo, some zone stuff for this World Finals, do you have kind of a favorite so far? They all kind of uh, differ in their own ways? From the standpoint of working them, there's – not a lot of difference. They all kind of have a different – Winter Classic is fast because we don't show up until Thursday, or I don't show up until Thursday night. And with it getting darker faster, it seems like you're you're sure. moving at the Winter Classic. You hardly don't see anything. And, um, you know, and being the – I laugh and say the rookie field rep, I always get to drive a little bit. And uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's okay being from West Virginia. We drive to everything anyhow. So uh, – um, automotes, I think of all hunts of any of UKC and even any other registry, nothing compares to automotes. And when you see the vastness of the hunt, the show, the confirmation show, uh, it's just, it truly is the event where history is, is made. And, and, and I can actually say that from the standpoint of winning it yeah. and then from the standpoint of working it. And there's nothing in my opinion compares to it. Um, the zones of both ends of TOC and the, the, the world, uh, their quality, but, uh, you know, I've been in Kentucky for two years for the TOC, that club, um, done a great job. Um, I got to kind of have a lot of fun down there, Send you to Kentucky right in the middle of March Madness. Yeah, and I got to ride those guys, and I can't remember the team that beat UK. Wasn't it St. Peter's? Well, I think yeah, it's a, oh I just kind of – when I started this year, I said I was a St. Peter's fan or asked if I was any <laughs> – then I almost got booed out of uh, – run out of Kentucky, but uh, <laughs> that was worth the drive to uh, get to do that. Uh, and um, and then the world is just the, the – I mean, you don't have to say anything else but the world. I yeah. mean, that's that's the that brings it in its in its own self. Yeah. And um, you know, and as you know, I would add another one in there, and that's youth nationals. Sure. To me, that's the autumn oaks and youth nationals to me are the the you know, I fuss at you all the time about working youth nationals. And I tell you, <laughs> I would drive and do it for free. I mean, it's just I think that's the those two sides are my my Absolutely. favorite of all of them so. yeah absolutely and i know i heard you mention yesterday a little bit making the drive all the way over here to west west tennessee <laughs> and you don't have your riding partners this weekend drew your son who's who's been a big part of yeah. our events for the past few years got college going on your dad isn't traveling as much anymore but yeah. uh, hopefully you're still having a good time here with uh, the field reps it, it and is and the staff. We, we told you back you know this kind of allows me the opportunity to do what i love and you know and alan i was listening to podcast coming over and, and he was talking about Lindell Price and you know growing up in southern West Virginia the East Virginia or the West Virginia area there back when you know your field reps worked the RQEs and back when yeah. you had to show up early to get in line at an RQE or you wasn't getting there and and uh, and I could still remember three hour cast but Lindell was you know and just getting to drive over here and do this um you know, I've told you before, it almost feels like you get taken advantage of something that you love to do because you even, and it's just, you know, uh, and some of these other guys, you know, me and Philip were talking this morning, same way, just allows us the opportunity to serve and uh, to give back to something, you know, that uh, you just something that means to us. Sure. Hey, well, Jamie, I appreciate you taking some time out of our day to come up here and talk to me. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, you've done a lot for us being a field rep. And even before that, you're a major asset to us. And, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, uh, to finish out the weekend strong here. All right, man. I'm looking forward. And someday I'm looking forward to my golden spoon. You know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's to all my Indiana friends that I say that to. So, all right, guys, thank y'all. That's it. Talking about the field reps helping us out at the World Championship, Doug Cundiff has been a field rep since 2006, and he has worked every – world championship since then except for this year uh, but he ended up being there his son-in-law Cody Carter got in the top 100 so he rode to uh, Tennessee with Cody and just supporting him but I got a chance to sit down with him and talk a little bit about uh, how it felt uh, what it felt like to be on the other side this year and here's Doug good afternoon Doug how are you today all right how you doing Alan good good so we're here Friday afternoon at the World Championship. Uh, Doug Cundiff, 
uh, from Indiana. And you're in a little different role this weekend. You've been a rep for how long for about us? About 19 years. About, uh, yep. No, it's been about 15 years. Yeah. About you 15 know, you years. were one of the first hires I had. Your dad used to, your dad yep. used to be, Charlie, was yep. a rep for a long time. Yep. And then he retired, and it was just a, a good, uh, it just seemed like the right thing to have you come on. So, yeah, it's been for, and since then, we have wore you out at these world championships. <laughs> this is the first one, I think, that you've not worked, isn't yep, it? Yeah, very first one. So, uh, Cody Carter, your son-in-law, got a, got cookie through the zones. Yep. And uh, so you rode down here with him. So how is that role being here to support Cord or Cody versus working the event? How is that? How does that feel? It's a different. Big, yeah, it's a big difference. I'm out here. I mean, I get to sit out here and visit with a lot of these guys that I usually don't get to do that too much working and stuff like that because we're busy. But sitting out here, you get to get her, the guys that's competing. Yeah. You get to see how they feel about this whole situation and visit with them. And it's. It's kind of neat how they how they how they think. Yeah, I and mean, you probably when you're when you're away from that side of it for as long as we kind of have, you know. Yeah. You used to compete a lot too, and same way with me. I think it's good to get out there in the trenches with the guys sometimes. It puts keeps things in perspective, so you don't lose sight of all that. Yeah, it does. I mean, it and it's changed a lot over through the years how how people think and uh -huh. how these the dogs have changed. Yeah. I mean, there's that's there's, probably the biggest thing is. Oh it? yeah, it was, that's a big thing now how the dogs have changed, the handlers have changed. I mean, it's a big different in the sport than what it was when I was competing in the big hunts. Yeah, but that's got to be pretty awesome to be along riding sporting your son-in-law Cody like that. Yeah, at I a did, hunt like this. It is kind of funny. We were sitting there visiting the other day, we were sitting at motel room. I mean, when he started dating my daughter back in 13 or 14, he didn't know nothing about coon hunting. And he got to going with me, and he's come a long ways. I mean, geez, I'd say so. He's, yeah. he's well, we use him a lot to judge and stuff like yeah. that. And he's a great judge. Yeah. But, uh, and, a, and a good handler too, I'm sure. How's, how's Cookie been operating for him? She's been operating real good. I mean, she's really a competitive kind of hound. Yeah. Last night they kind of struggled in woods, but. They, she come out on top. She just seems like she's one of them dogs that she's some way, somehow she's going to win. Yeah. How uh, do you, do you ever give him any advice or have to, or any I try, suggestions? Or... <laughs> I try to give him some advice, but you know how kids <laughs> yeah. are today. <laughs> He's probably going to take more from Tyler than he is from you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. They don't like these old, they don't like the old time advice. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you were out on the cast last night. Uh, did you see any other decent dogs in the cast? They were all pretty decent. And the hunting was absolutely great. It just don't seem like the coons were moving where yeah. we were at. But the hunting and the guide and judge, yeah. they've done a great job. Everybody was saying it's just dry around It is. Here it's right pretty now. dry. But, man, you know, Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday, it was 100 degrees down here. Yeah. And then, you know, the forecast was that it was going to drop off you know, like 20, 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. And it really was. Yesterday, yeah. the breeze, nice breeze all day. Couldn't believe the difference. Yeah, it was Got real, lucky for Thursday nights. So. Yeah, it was real nice. And like I said, the hunting was great. It just didn't seem like the coons were moving where we were at. Yeah. So it, how's it been for you? You're always up here in the Master Hounds role or the rep role or whatever. Is it kind of nice just to sit back, kick it, back a little bit? or It's kind of relaxing. Yeah. But I... I've done it so many years. I'm kind of lost. Yeah. Hey, I I know that feeling. It's yeah. It's uh. But yeah. Hey, it's good to have you here, anyways, and and appreciate you sitting hey. in here for a little bit. And well, I have, appreciate. Have, it. have fun and enjoy the rest of your weekend. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Alan. Yeah. This podcast is brought to you by the all new Dogtra Pathfinder Two. Dogtra, the official GPS collar partner of UKC. Even though Chad Smith was the busiest guy in the building most of the weekend, I was able to pull him away for an interview to discuss not only his dogs being in the zones and in the world finals, but also uh, the ins and outs of putting on the world championship from a host club perspective. Here's Chad. Chad, how you doing, bud? I'm doing good, Trevor. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to have an opportunity to talk with you for sure because you've kind of been our point of contact for uh, planning this event for years now. And uh, a big part of, of us bringing the world championship to West Tennessee for the first time in UKC's history. So is uh, speaking for the community and the local coon clubs, what's what's kind of going through y'all's mind right now with the world hunt being here? I think what it's done is, is uh, and I mentioned it last night, it, it's brought everybody together. Um, as you know, we're, we're, our numbers are getting smaller 
But as we got in this thing together, started pulling people together. Yeah. It's amazing how people start coming out that you haven't seen. I've seen a guy at, uh, at the Tuesday meeting, the, the guide meeting we had Tuesday. I haven't seen him in 30 years. Mm. You know, since I was a kid. He walks up, says, hey, I want to help. Yeah. So, and there's, that's just one story. There's several. So the, the, you know, three county area, tri-state area was super fired up. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. I mean, the mayor, the mayor's, uh, mayor quick. Mayor was here yesterday. He looked just like a coon owner. Could have blended in with the crowd, came up and talking about his dogs and the hunting terrain a little bit. That was refreshing. Yeah. Well, David, um, and, uh, some of my kinfolk, Bud Hill, who Bud got it last night. Yeah. David Quick and, and Bud hunted together when they were kids. And uh, so he, he's a coon hunter. He's a, he's, he's not a current coon hunter, but he knows what we're dealing with. And he's super tickled today. He was uh, wanting me to show him how to get the U, the YouTube UKC YouTube up. He wanted to see the live show. Yeah. He, he showed everybody that uh, the bystanders coming through. He's yeah. Yeah. When the local bank president come in, he wants to show him, you know? So yeah, he's actually going to show it to, he's going to share it to the city's page on uh social media platforms and spread the word for the locals to watch. And man, that's awesome. It is. It's a, uh, it's, it's really nice to be somewhere where the hunt, the tradition of coon hunt is embraced and they support, uh, support what we're doing out here. Uh, so, so for you, I guess, obviously you, you came at this event a couple of different ways. First off, we'll talk about competing. Uh, if you have a, a really nice two or three year old, uh, black and tan female, you and your partner, Corey mm -hmm. Jeffries, who's actually Corey's still in the event right now with his male dog. That's a litter mate. Is that right? That's, that's correct. Ripsaw. Yeah, we... Uh, so, so tell us a little bit about, about those hounds a little bit and talk about Corey, your partner a little bit. Well, Corey and I, um, we went to high school together and, uh, I knew he coon hunted, but he was on the other side of the County. So I never went with him. I was from the river side of the County and he was from the town side of the County, okay. which was you know, 15, 20, 25 minutes. And so we just never went to hunting together. Uh, my dad coon hunted, my grandfather coon hunted. So uh, I did, it was, it was bred in me. I am the only coon hunter. My brother doesn't coon hunt, but I do. So out of college, uh, right out of college, I was, uh, I had a dog named Twister that I made a grand night and, um, I've seen Corey in town. Yeah. And he said, Hey, you hunting any? I said, Yeah, yeah, I'm hunting some. I want to go with you sometime. So I think it was a year or two later. Um, seen him again. And I had another female that I made a deal grand, um, named Belle. And he said, I want to go. I said, Well, let's go. So I that week I took him and then he started going with me. And then I said, I'm gonna make you a deal you can't refuse. I said, I'm gonna give you half of this dog. But when we do this, we're gonna be half everything. Yeah. You know, if you buy something, I'm half. If I buy something, I'm half. We're not going to worry about splitting the money. We're just going to be havers. So that was mid-2000s, 2005 or six. I'd say it's been, a, ever since I've been in coon hunting, you two yeah. have been kind of synonymous together and had some really nice hounds. Yeah, like brothers. Yeah. We don't have any arguments. Uh, you know, they say partnerships don't work, but you, if that's the case, you don't have the right partner. True. So um, we have no trouble. This... This pup or these two pups, you know, I got knocked out. My female looked flat at, at Palmyra. She just did. She just, of course, is a hunter or two hard. And I have, I, I poured it on her, but she looked flat and, and Rip looked real sharp. We call him Rip. Rip looked real sharp. And um, so when we got down here, we were talking about it to some folks outside about how that, how the litter mates, it's the only two living. One of them died early. And um, so Josie, grandmother was a female we had in the bottom we call it in the bottoms in the mississippi river bottoms named jewel that bill shanker and terry nadine gave me and so i hunted her she was a litter mate to bell which was a deal grand and they bred her to kansas jr which is blaze buyer stock which mm -hmm. is a very 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 well known black and tan stock kind of comes from the harold bailey line bill shanker line uh Blaze is, is super successful. So they bred Jewel to Junior, and that produced a dog named Water Oak Molly that Roger Gurley had. And, and Roger bred uh, Molly to David Roten, Ron Roten, the, the, the coon hunting Rotens. Sure. Yep. In, in northwest Arkansas and southwest Missouri. 
<laughs> Those dudes have been around as long as I mean, they're 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 legends sure. along with Bill Schenker. That those two names should be synonymous with one another. Anybody Ron, in the black and tan breed are going to know those names, and a lot of people who aren't are going to know them as well. Yeah, Bill Schenker passed away um, two or three years ago, mm-hmm. and um, Ron, which is that's David's dad, David Roten, which is one black and tan day. He's been in the top 100. Uh, David's cousin, I think, placed fifth one time. I think his name's Chris. So they bred Molly, which was a they made Molly a granite, bred her to Splitter, which was David's dog. And David got in the top 100 in the world hunt. Splitter's daddy was Kodiak. He got in a, he was top, he was number seven in like in the early 2000s. So we have a infinity with that side. And then on the dad side, um, Lawton Robinson, which a Hall of Fame, a lifetime member, black and tan guy, um, been around for a hundred years. Super good guy, yeah. hard hunter. Uh, he started Robinson Line from a dog named Sanders Hank, kept working its way down. Well, Twister, the one I mentioned to you when I was in college, was a um, half brother to uh, Brigman's Black Bow. I hope I'm not losing you. Nope. Which was Cooper Storm and Ike's daddy. Good. Which was Tom Lee's big boy's daddy. So as you see, I've I've I've, I've had hounds on both sides. So know he, this, you know this yeah. blood. Oh, very well. Very well. Very well. Yeah. yeah. So when you cross them two together, it's like raspberry lemonade. Yeah. It works. You know. So that's where we are. I mean, Rips. Um, just they just turned three. Yeah. They got their whole life ahead of them. They're winners. Yeah. Um, rips a simple hound. When he barks, strike him. When he trees, you treat. Yeah. Stays out of trouble. Don't want to be with nothing. Will not be with nothing. Um, now something can be with him. That's you know, but he doesn't want to be with nothing else. He he he's a he's a loner, natural born loner. Yeah. And his sister's a natural born loner. We're excited. I mean, we got we feel like and we made made that cross similar. So we took Josie, which is the mom of these two, uh, Grand Knight, top 100 last year. You know, she was yep. in top one, uh, national Grand Knight, black and tan. Uh, wanted, want her RQE to get qualified for the world hunt. We bred her to uh, Kenneth Chooch LaRue's dog, which is the president of the association. That's right. His name's Punkin, and Punkin is a half brother to Big Boy. Yeah. Both of them being out of Ike. And Ike's daddy was Brigman's Black Bow. Which was a half to Twister. No kidding. Way back when. Yeah. So, yeah, it works. It Those works. dogs are intelligent. They look, most of them are lookers and they want to please. You'll notice that dog just, he loves you. He wants to be on top of you. He wants you to rub him on the head. Uh, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a good little, little dog. I mean, he's got it. I mean, just, he's got an excellent chance tonight. Yeah. Number one, he's in, he, he knows he's bottoms. No matter where he draws, he knows the bottoms. He knows how to operate around the big bottoms. So he's got an excellent chance. As long as my handler don't get nervous, we'll, <laughs> we'll be good. There you go. I can't go with my handler, by the way. Of course, you cannot go with me. I don't want to mess up the, the mojo he's got going on. Yeah, huh? and I, I, of course, you know, I got to help on the on the, sure. on the seven. We, you know, we're putting six out early, yep. three out late. So, of course, I'm coordinating with you about – guides on the on the early and the late so yeah that's kind of where i was gonna go with it next obviously you were wanting to compete in the event you guys got a hound now in the top 23 but also you've been our main point of contact for this host club in this area as far as uh coordinating guides and judges which is hard to do um everybody who puts on any events knows how hard it is to get uh non-hunting guides and judges and last night after round one Man, we uh, everybody came back, said that they had opportunities to tree coons. I think 25 of the 26 casts actually scored on coons. A couple of them ended up being dead cast due to scratching out or uh, different things, taking minus, uh, uh, which you'll get in hunts. I mean, it happens, but uh, we had a couple questions. We already uh, talked to a couple field reps on here, and the, the judges did an awesome job last night. So uh, kudos to you in this area for kind of stepping up to the plate and getting quality guides and judges, which is what it takes to have a successful world championship. Yeah, that's what we're, you know, as you know, I just got back from, I had the camera guy, a uh, young, nice young, young man. We, uh, we traveled a couple bottoms 
trying to find some some good service for the final cast tomorrow night. We'll keep that under wraps right now, but we think we got the final cast location yeah. pegged. So, so a place where we're hoping, to obviously, to have service to text play-by-play stuff in, but maybe even get some live footage from the woods. That's ever since you and I and, and Alan started talking, it's been my goal to get those folks who are in the countryside who's got the internet connection to see kind of like the Bassmasters. Yeah. Uh, you know, we want them to see some of the important parts of the, of the night. So yes, I, I feel good about it. Really. Yeah. Uh, he walked out in the woods with his backpack and his camera, uh, did some pinging, pinging tests, talked back with the guys at the headquarters. Actually, they got footage from us this, this just an hour ago yeah. from, from the, from the woods. So feel really good about it. Um, big square, uh, no problems, big square woods, rectangle cop woods, um, recutting all night. Don't have to worry about res- nothing. Recut, Perfect. just, just, uh, time in at eight time out at 10. Yep. Unless you, unless you get out of pocket and have to call time out or something. So That's yeah, I, I feel great about it. The, you know, we started guide meetings early, um, wanted this thing to go off without a hitch. And, uh, Alan loves my, it's, it's, it's probably a, y'all probably stick my, board on some social media post somewhere but yeah. I, you know i got this big board that that all the, the guides are on and the judges so um uh, everybody's been tickled trevor i mean um it's never been here yeah you know it's never been west tennessee so uh i don't know how many coons we, coons we scored on last night but i'm gonna say it was on par with southern illinois yeah. you know probably not as good as northern indiana but it was on par with southern illinois yeah Hey, well, I'm I'm tickled. Obviously, I'm from East Tennessee, but I still feel a sense of pride for this to be in in the state of Tennessee, and and seeing the outreach here feels just like home. Uh, it's just such a such a welcoming community, and uh, it's the guides and judges are all very willing, and it's been a it's been awesome to work with you guys, and appreciate all the hard work you put in, and uh, looking forward to a really good couple of nights coming up, and uh, crowning our world championship on uh, Saturday night. Yeah, go black. That's what, I, that's what I always say. There you go, go Black. <laughs> Thanks for talking to me, bud. All right. God bless. On Friday afternoon, I had the chance to sit down with Logan Rose, young man who owns Rose's Wild Dream and Echo, who is in the top six of the TOC, and ended up finishing 16th in the world championship. Here's Logan. Logan, how are you doing today? I'm good, Trevor. How are you? Good, good. Man, here we are at another major event, and it's another uh, semifinal, and you and, you and old uh, Echo were back in it. Uh, what are your, how are you feeling today? We're, we're into the top 23 today. We're in the, the second round of the world finals. How, how, uh, how are you feeling? How's your mindset today? Not as nervous as yesterday, but still pretty nervous. Uh, just really happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, it's just really a blessing. To be ah, here. Yeah. That first round is always the tough one. I think you can make it through that first round and kind of playing with house money. It seems like at that point. Yeah. Yeah. It was rough really. Yeah. How was the hunt last night? Who, who did you draw first off? Oh, uh, I drew. Did you know any of them? No, I had no idea. I never met any of them till yeah. last night. Drew a couple of English dogs and a another Walker dog. I got you. And what? What? Uh, how did the cast kind of go play out for you? Uh, it's kind of shaky. I mean, we made a lot of circle trees, big leafy oak trees. Just canopy was really thick. The ground was really dry. It's kind of hard for the dogs to pick up on a good track. Uh. The other walker dog treated a coon. It's the first coon we treed. And then another circle tree or so. English female done a good job on some coons. Had a whole litter, look like. And then uh, Echo, he finally drifted off through her and got by himself like he had all night and finally hit one. Yeah. Had a coon. And then uh, towards the end there, guy treated his dog for whatever reason, and the two caught him. That put him back down in the hole, and that's all she wrote. Yeah. Hey, it kind of takes breaks and kind of takes a dog that can tree a coon and not make many mistakes. We say that all the time at these major events, kind of what sets a, a kind of a consistent cast winner away from the ones who don't always make it that far. And Echo, he's kind of proven himself to be that consistent cast winner. He's had a heck of a year this year. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about Echo, his age, and maybe some of his breedings and bloodline? Uh, Echo just turned three back in August. Uh, I've had him since he was born. I've still got his mother and actually have a – whole litter of his litter mates right now full brothers and sisters 
So that's a cross you made with, uh, what is it, the stylish knockout dog? Yes, sir. Uh, Chris uh, Bowling, right? Chris Bowling. So is he from your part of the country? Yeah, he's the next county down from me. It's I know it's crazy, but it's about an hour and 15 minutes from my house to his, just the way it lays. I'm from East Tennessee, so I know all about driving around mountains and stuff. It's not always as simple yeah. as driving straight down the road like yeah. it would be in uh, Indiana or Michigan or something like that. But uh, So you have hunted you hunted with Knockout prior to that, so you kind of knew, and you maybe yeah. you hunted with some pups out of him that yeah. took you to, to make that cross. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of weird the way it happened. Uh, I bought Echo's mother when I was in high school off my uncle. And uh, I hunted her for a while, treated a lot of coons with her. She was fun, uh, more action-packed than Echo. She was going to get her mouth open. She's going to treat a cone somewhere. Yeah. And uh, I put it on one of them groups on Facebook looking for a stud dog. I was going to breed her. And Chris spoke up and said, hey, man, you're more than welcome to come breed to this one. Yeah. Just, just want a pup. So we got together and uh, made it happen. Now here we are three years later kind of worked out didn't it yeah yeah so we talked about this year for echo so far uh anybody who keeps up with uh coon hunt knows about the tournament champions yep. i know you and echo made a a heck of a run there made it all the way to the semifinal cast the the top six where uh, i guess dominator yeah uh, ran into dominator and he was on a hot roll and you guys kind of had a shootout there and uh uh, so you ended there in the semifinals in the top six of toc and now here you are in the top 23 of the world uh it, obviously, they have their their differences. The TOC is a big money uh, kind of event. And this the World Championship, obviously, there is a purse, but it's more about the prestige and stuff. Do you have uh, any comparison stakes in your mind for what the differences that you you see at these events? Uh, biggest thing, I guess, is that world title. Yeah. Uh, getting put on the paperwork and everybody knowing that, hey, you've got a world champ. Yeah. I mean, it'd be kind of life-changing. I mean, I personally know one – world champ from a few years ago and it's just unreal how or the way i can tell his life's changed since yeah winning it talking about old jr right yeah. down the road from you yeah 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 absolutely and i think that uh this this world championship title carries a lot of prestige and a lot of just there's a lot of power in that world championship title and uh yeah last we got the kind of the live show stuff going on here and you got your interview last night on the youtube channel live for all your peers to see what would you think about that whole setup uh, both the interviews at TOC and this one, it's pretty sweet getting to come in after that early win or late win, like the TOC, and getting that interview. It's something I'd never experienced till the TOC, and it was just unreal. Yeah. Well, Logan, man, I appreciate you coming up here and talking to me a little bit. Uh, talk a little bit about the World Championship, and I wish you and Echo luck tonight in the top 23 of the World Championship. Thank you, Trevor. This year we saw Matt Lingo from Indiana there at the event. He was there supporting his uh, co-partner and co-owner of uh, Queen, Northern Creek Blue Queen, who ended up finishing 18th. Had a chance to sit down with Matt. Here's Matt Lingo. Good evening, Matt. How are you today? I'm doing good today. Yeah, Friday here at the World Championship, and you still got a dog in it, right? We still got a dog in it, yep. But you're just kind of here for support. You got Derek Bryan handling the dog, right? Yeah, Derek's handling. He's been hunting the dog, getting it ready, and um, the reality of it is it's really his dog. Oh, I'm yeah. Just kind of a silent partner on her. Yeah. But she, he, uh, he's been hunting her, getting her ready, and she's been looking good. And uh, So if, if he gets – through tonight first round then i'm gonna take over the reins he's got a wedding to go to that he's in i heard him mention that yeah. last night. so yeah. uh he's gonna put a little pressure on me tonight I hope. yeah so what have you thought about the hunting here as compared to home a little different you know it's a little bit different um it reminds me a lot of home uh it's it's flat um i, I don't think the coon population at least what i saw last night is quite as dense as what we have at home um but you know it may be the same, just, you know, the night that we had didn't didn't show it. Yeah, so, but, you know, I was really curious how the coon were going to move here last night, you know, after it had been so, it Monday and Tuesday, it was like 100 degrees here, and they were calling for cooler temperatures by Thursday, and it did, like 30 degrees, you know, low 70s and yeah, breezy, and yeah. so I was kind of wondering how the coon were going to react to that, if they were going to be out, you know, but... Yeah. But a lot of the guys coming back and saying it was pretty dry. Yeah. Is that what it, you kind it was of noticed? Super dry out there. Yeah. And we were pretty fortunate. We were on we were on a little bit of water there, and I think that probably helped us a little bit. Oh yeah. Um but uh I think we we scored on three last night. Yeah. So we probably treed more than that, but we scored on three. So. Yeah. So you brought your wife along as well. So. I did. Yep. I gotta have somebody keep me out of trouble. Yeah. So uh no kids this weekend, huh? No, she's uh, you know, we've been 
been busy doing this and that, running kids around, going to hunts, and she's been taking up slack with the kids, and so this yeah. is her vacation away from the kids. So yeah, yeah. Well, do, have you done anything else here in in uh, in the area other than just hang out here at the fairgrounds? No, we just kind of hung out the fairgrounds, went out and ate, hung out in the hotel, and that's about all we've done. Sleep yeah. a little bit. Yeah, trying yeah. to catch up. Yeah, so, well, I'm not going to take up much of your time. I know uh, you're getting ready to go out on the hunt with Derek tonight, and uh, so uh, thanks for sitting in here with me, and good luck on the hunt tonight. Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks for everything you guys do. I appreciate UKC a lot. Thank you. I was able to pull in Mr. Cody Carter, who is, hand, who is hunting the Snooky's Cookie female who's been on such a roll lately. Uh, here's my interview with Cody. Cody, how you doing, bud? Doing pretty good, buddy. Yeah, t uh, you and Cookie have kind of been on a hot streak here for the past year or so since you've had her. Can you tell us a little bit about Cookie, hunting style, breeding, that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, Cookie's off of uh, Nisho River Cuz and uh, Mr. Clean Female. Uh, I got her back last November, so we've been at it about a year now. Uh, she She's kind of a dog that just, she does about anything you need her to do to pull out a cast when she, uh, she looks a lot better than thick coons, but... Uh, She'll go as far as she's got to to tree one if she's got to. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. You, you know, you see her dominate at some of the uh, uh, hunts in southern Michigan, northern Indiana areas where there's real thick coon. But you, you're down in the Greencastle, Cloverdale area, right? And that's not the that's not like a major spot for coon population, right? <laughs> no, I mean we got some coons you can get into them, but you know, back home in an hour cast, if you tree, if you got the big end of a coon, you're you're more than likely going to win a cast. Uh, she can tree two or three down there in an hour, just depending on the night. I, I was kind of, you know, the pick them, uh, kind of a big thing for us now with the world. We get a, quite a few of them in, and Cookie was the second most picked dog. And I kind of think it has to do with that. You're hunting her a lot there and somewhere where uh, maybe kind of similar to this. You hunt a lot of, there is, there's not a ton of ag around Greencastle. There's some, but there's some, you're hunting a lot of big timber yeah, and a lot having to recut a lot. Yeah, rolling hills. Uh, it's not flat by no means like everybody thinks the whole state yeah. is, but uh, we got a little lag, but mainly big timber. Yeah, which is similar to here. It's it's flatter here than it is in your part of the country, but it's yeah. big timber recutting here. Yeah, last night I think we cut loose in 10,000 acres, and the biggest thing I stepped over was a stick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that bodes well for the night. I know they say tracking conditions are pretty tough. It's so dry down here. They're in kind of an unprecedented drought down here, so having yeah. to stay as close to – the Mississippi River and kind of the levees off of it as close as possible. But what was the cast like last night? It it was rough, uh, pretty much the whole cast. We uh, we cut loose on a, a big levee ditch, and uh, we all treed in the ground right out of the truck. I treed for 50 and 100 and a quarter, and uh, two dogs backed her. And uh, we got in there to them, and uh, she come and met me off the tree and took minus both ways, and the other two split. I'd say we probably treat something we shouldn't have and all caught a break. And uh, she slipped off and treated coon after that and put her back to the good 25 plus, And that's all it took. And it's a good thing about the world championship. It's not like autumn oaks and things. Score doesn't matter here. You win, you cast, and you advance. That, that's right. I, I held on that 25 plus for about an hour. And uh, she ended up treated with another one after the hunt. But yeah. she was way out of pocket at that point. It didn't need it either, did no. you? No. Yeah, so we, we kind of mentioned Autumn Oaks, or I did anyway, so let's talk about that a little bit. You competed in a lot of our major events and had a lot of success. You've had a success at Autumn Oaks, uh, English days, different breed days, state championships, and then you've also uh, made it to the second day of our uh, – or you made it to the second round of TOC this year with Cookie. Yep. You've been here at the World Championship, I don't know, four or five years in a row. This is my fifth year in a row. Fifth uh, year in a row. Second in top time of advance past Thursday night. I've I've made the top 23 the last two years. Kind of compare them a little bit. I know you uh, the TOC is there in your backyard in Greencastle, so that one – and obviously you're hunting for big money there, but the prestige of the World Championship and the prestige of Autumn Oaks – is it? Do you have a favorite of the three, or how do they? What are, the, what are some of the differences you see there? Uh, to be honest, for me, they're all about on par. I think winning any of the three would be a huge accomplishment. I mean, it just there's so many dogs you compete against. Uh, I'd say the World Hunt and the TOC is a little different. You know, you got to get qualified. Obviously, you got to get your five wins or an RQE for. The world and uh you got to hunt a zone and be able to get the zones are hard as it is i mean just getting through the zones hard enough uh 
the autumn oaks kind of you know go big or go home i mean to me i i only hunt the autumn oak on years you know i'm packing something i know i'm capable of scoring big with and that kind of deal uh the rock dog i hunted for ellis keen and jr gray we, we never tried our luck up there because he was he was usually a quarter and a hunter and a quarter at a mile every time you cut him so <laughs> you never really had to worry about scoring big with him he was just kind of a cast winner uh but no cookie uh cook, cookie's just all around dog we've had a really successful year we're uh we're dominating the state race in pkc uh, Oh, between PKC and Pro Sport, I don't know. We've probably won ten, twelve thousand dollars with her this year. She just competes at every level real well. I mean, yeah. she's just a balanced dog. <clears throat> the first time I ever met you, Cody, was actually back at my first World Championship, just a couple months after coming on board. That was uh, twenty nineteen, Marshalltown, Iowa. I think you were hunting an English dog back then. But uh, yes, since then, man, I see you at a lot of events. Obviously, you're uh, uh, one of our field rep, Doug Cundiff's uh, son-in-law, and man. It, it, one of the sharper judges we have out there, always one that we lean on. If you're not in, you seem to always be in, but if you're not in, we always lean on you to judge. You judge the the final cast that the Autumn Oaks for us and uh, just real sharp and all that. So I do want to say I appreciate all the stuff that you do for us yes, in that sir. capacity. And and for that, uh, you know, we're here on Friday night at the World Championship. You're in the top 23, and I want to wish you and Cookie some good luck tonight. I appreciate it, buddy. Hopefully we can get her done one more night. <laughs> yes, sir. Have a good one, bud. Thank you. I was also able to pull in Mr. Joe McGraw. First time I've ever met him. He had a really interesting dog there at the finals. Big Valley Ranger, who ended up, uh, we found out, was a crossbred out of a Trian Walker American Leopard Hound Cross. So I hope you enjoy this interview with Mr. Joe McGraw. Joe, how you doing, bud? I'm doing just fine, bud. I'm excited and glad to be here. Yes, sir. So we're here on Friday evening at the Coonhound World Championship. Uh, we've got the dogs here that made it through the first round last night, and we're getting ready for round two tonight. We drew our cast and just waiting for dark. Uh, Joe, can you tell me uh, where you're from and a little bit about your dog? I'm from a place called Pounding Mill, Virginia. Uh, uh, I, my dog, he's a ex-breed. He's a Trium Walker. His dad's a Trium Walker, and his, the female was a American Leopard Hound. Yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to pull you in here because it's a little interesting to us. Obviously, yes. the expert program is something that's kind of catching on for us. But whenever yeah. I was compiling data on the sires and dams of our top mm -hmm. 100 and seeing that there was a, an expert out of a Walker Leopard Cross yeah. is, is a little uncommon. It's unorthodox for us to be to be uh, honest with you. Can you tell me a little bit about how this cross happened? Did you have a hand in it or is it just uh, a pup that you bought? Or no, uh, one of my good friends, uh, Chad Kennedy, back home, he's he's – you know, well known around the house there. Uh, he's got a male dog, a stud dog. He studs him out now. Uh, uh, we call him Vu. It's uh, at nighttime in a rage is his name. And I wanted to pup out him so bad, you know. And uh, I loved the dog. Hunted with him for years. And uh, at the time, the only pups he had on the ground was uh, the ex breed. And uh, just so happened, the guy that uh, owned the uh, female, uh, Alan Sparks, he was well renowned in the the ex breed world, or I'm sorry, the leopard world. Yeah. And uh, he had some talk. I think uh, the crayon female, uh, which is the mommy of the female my dog was out of, yeah. uh, she was on the reproducer's list. And, uh, you know, I done a little bit thinking, you know, that'd be a good cross because she reproduced. And, you know, I, I was a little bit unsure about the, the ex breed stuff, never had to fool with it before. But I said, I want one out of him, and it's the only one I could find. So I tried it. And, uh, uh I got him when he was about eight months old and a uh, super smart, natural starter. Just started right off and here we are now. If a man didn't know better looking at him, you'd think he was kind of a, a black and tan style dog with just some white feet and toes, uh, kind of a different looking dog. The uh, dog's name is Ranger, correct? Ranger, yes. Ranger, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and uh, so he, we're here in the top 100. You made it through the, uh, yeah. the zones. Which zones were you in? I was in zone five, Pilot Mountain. Pilot Mountain, okay. Yes. So you made it through the zones, and last night was round one. How did he look in round one last uh, night? He's a get-by-self type dog. Uh, slipped away two times. Uh, had a coon both times. Uh, got a little worried there. I was hunting with a nice English female. She come back and uh, come down to the wire. He was treed. Hunt was over. Uh, he had a coon. He wins. He don't have a coon. She wins. And luckily, he had a coon. Good stuff, man. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know right offhand who you drew tonight, but I'm sure it's a tough cast. We all, oh. all the 23 left are pretty tough at this oh, point. Oh, yeah. I know uh, two of the guys I've drawn, I've followed since I've been a little boy, uh, Kurt Iring and Jeff Rickles, you know, and uh, mm. 
I've looked up to them and I've never met, just met them here, you know, but yeah. uh, I really looked up to them and I, I feel, I feel honored to hunt with them. I can't wait. Well, you're here in the yeah. best of the best. You've earned your spot here. And yeah, you're drawing Kurt with Whitey and Jeff with Hobo and yeah. who, whoever the fourth one is, I'm sure is going to be a nice yeah. dog too. And Absolutely. you're going to have to go out and earn it tonight, but it sounds like all that I've heard, you got a nice hound, fully capable. And, uh, man, I'm tickled that you're here and I wish you good luck tonight. I sure appreciate it, sir. And, uh, my little boy, uh, my little boy claims the dog. It's his dog. Oh, so yeah. I'm going to try to do it for him. Yeah. Who's, is it your son? Uh, my little boy. Yeah. He's nine. He'll be turning nine in November. Yeah. His name's Brantley. Little Brantley. Well, yeah. Brantley, uh, Hopefully he's got a little bit more in the tank for you, bud. But regardless, there's a bunch of people that tried to make it here and your hounds in the top 23 of the world hunt. So congratulations to you too. I was able to interview Brandon Scalf, who ended up judging our final cast of our world championship. Here's Brandon. Brandon, how you doing, man? Oh, doing great, Trevor. Just glad to be here. Uh, uh, no, no place in the world that I'd rather be than right here in Dyersburg, Tennessee for the 2020 world hunt this year. Yeah. Hey, matter of fact, the first time I ever met you was at the World Championship. That was uh, a couple months after I started. It was in uh, Marshalltown, Iowa, 2019 World Championship. And you were there with a dog that me and Alan had tried to figure out the uh, the pronunciation of for uh, for the whole week prior. And we meet you there. And uh, you and old New Gene were there. Old New Gene. Yeah, New Gene was a crossbred dog. Uh, my, my wife uh, asked me what I was going to name that dog. And I said, well... Uh, I always listened to Jerry Clara as a kid and as a old L U L Marcel, W L Claude Clovis, and I thought, well, I just named that New Gene right there. Of course, it was a joke, and uh, he st he started winning some hunts, and the, the name stuck with him, and uh, kind of got made made fun of. But I I sure like that crossbred dog. Man, you guys did a pile of winning together. You've won, obviously, your high scoring X bred at that at that World Championship. I'm almost positive of. Uh, winter classic wins, uh, had luck at Autumn Oaks. And if I'm not mistaken, the dogs at Grand Night Champion Hall of Fame it, attained that title as well. You guys did a pile of winning together. Yeah, we uh, are, went down to the winter classic, and uh, I'd all, always wanted to hunt Arkansas. And luckily, drawed out, I uh, got to go to Mariana, Arkansas. Um, they said it was didn't get a lot of snow down there, but in the middle of an ice storm, and we got drew out and got put in some government land and was able to score on two coons and, and was tickled to death. Got to put him in the Hall of Fame there in uh, Mariana, Arkansas, in an ice storm. So that was that was some kind of a trip right there. No kidding. That's what finished him out? That is. That oh, was, my goodness. I did not know that. That is pretty neat. Hey, that was, uh, that was a miserable year at Winter Classic. Sometimes you'll go down there and it'll be sunny in 75, but that year it was 25 degrees and there was icicles hanging from the trees. Uh, that kind of was a, an unprecedented year for that part of the country. I'll never forget that Winter Classic at all. But uh, since then, recently, you have a, a young female. Are you been hunting a, a couple of young dogs out of New Gene? Uh, yes, sir. We got a, a pup. We we crossed him over. So New Gene, he was a half blue, a quarter English, and a quarter Walker. And I crossed him over to a hard time awesome female, or a John the Baptist female that was a, a grand, grand pup out of hard time awesome. Uh, she was more of a, a quiet on the track, uh, but a real, real hard tree dog, uh, had her coons. And it's just one of those crosses that uh, we didn't know what color they was going to be when they when they come out. And uh, and the one I chose to hunt was actually a, actually a, a red tick dog. He looks like a blue dog. Houndy got the ear, uh, got a set of wheels under him. But uh, just a real hard tree dog and, um, and gets through her and has his coons. We named him uh, another shade of new gene uh, to keep, keep the joke running. Yeah. And there's a, a new Genia dog or something, as a female or something that I'm thinking of that I've seen around. Yeah, that was the first. Uh, that was the first cross we made. We crossed to uh, the uh, John the Baptist Hard Time Awesome female, and I uh, just just produced a uh, uh, at the house, and it was a little different hunting. So we live in uh, right in the, the heart of Daniel Boone National Forest. A lot of uh, straight up and down. Mm. Uh, the place where Daniel Boone should have stopped his voyage. It's uh, <laughs> rough as the cob. So you have to have a dog to uh, that that that's got tracking ability. Uh, that's able to edge cliff lines and uh of course acorn woods is our is our main place to hunt and um a little dog that uh it could just create cones in acorn woods and and we really liked her uh guy up in ohio has her now and uh and just just hoping to do good with her as well yeah absolutely hey well the reason we're here we're here at the the coonhound world championship it's night two we just got through the first round last night on thursday night had an awesome night and uh and anybody who who's put on one of these events or been to one of these events know that judges uh, are a major part of keeping things smooth and uh, 
and you are always on the top of Alan and I's list. If we see that you don't make it through for whatever reason, you're always one of the first ones we reach out to. And with us being in Dyersburg, Tennessee, I know it's a long way from home, but I, I, sh- I got a I got a hold of you there. It, well, what was it Tuesday? Not not much notice, but uh, man, you were uh, very accommodating and were quick to to jump up and to help us out best you could. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm a uh, got my 12 year old boy here with me, uh, and and that's uh, uh, one of one of the biggest uh, uh, things in my life. Uh, I'd been been away from coon hunting for a while, and uh, some some guys come up to the farm wanted to coon hunt, and uh, oh, dad, please uh, give give me a coon dog, and uh, and. And so here we're here we're back again and, and having a great time and just just tickled to death to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, hey, you're one of the, the good guys in the sports to me. And man, we, we always appreciate you always helping out. You're always highly recommended by everyone who you judge and, and we appreciate you being here and we hope you're enjoying your time at the world championship. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Brendan. On Saturday morning, I was able to talk to Bryce Matthews, who handled Jed into uh, fifth place in the Coonhound World Championship. I hope you enjoy this interview with Bryce Matthews. Bryce, how you doing, bud? Hey, buddy. I can't complain. We're here. It's been a good week. Yeah, you guys, uh, you, you've had a good weekend. We're here Saturday morning, and uh, you and your hound, Jed, that you've been competing with this weekend, uh, had a pretty good run at it. Ended up last night with a fifth place finish in the World Championship. Uh, what were you, how, How's your mindset this morning? How, how are you doing today? You know, I, I'm good. I'm thankful that we're here. I uh, cannot complain about our outcome. Uh, obviously, I wanted to be in that top four something fierce, but, yeah. you know, it wasn't meant to be. So we're going to take uh, fifth place with some uh, humility and humbleness, and we're going to move on and try it again next year. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll get to the to the last cast, late round cast last night here in a bit, but let's start off kind of with your journey. You haven't had Jed very long, is that right? No, sir. I I got Jed at uh, Autumn Oaks. Right. You hunted him at Oaks, right? Yes, sir. I got a cast win there. I got two wins. I got him in the National Duels, and uh, then I also got him at the Grands. Wow. And then uh, the dog was already qualified for the world, obviously, and you hunted him in uh, – what zone did you hunt him in? Uh, we went to Zone 4, Palmyra, Missouri. And how'd you do out there? We did good. We uh, we scored 300-plus with a cast win on Friday night, and I believe we had 350 with the cast win on Saturday, so doubled up to get us here. Double, doubled up, one of the top-scoring dogs in your zone, and it advanced you here uh, to the finals on Thursday in, uh, in West Tennessee here in Dyersburg. Uh, talk, me, talk to me a little bit about your first-round cast and just that Thursday altogether, just kind of uh, what you thought about the World Championship. Uh, you know, so we got down here, and uh, – I actually got to meet the owner of Jed for the first time. Uh, it's kind of, kind of funny how that worked out, but yeah. you know he seemed seemed to be a pretty good guy. And he he said he wanted to go to, go along on the cast. Uh, he's from the area, so he and I headed off to the woods. And uh, you know the three dogs they jammed a tree right out of the truck. I took a hundred strike and fifty tree on it. Uh, scored one fifty on it, sitting pretty good. Uh, and Jed sunk in there and he treed one by himself about nine hundred yards. Uh, so we scored on two two coons that cast, uh, leading with 375, and I, f- I felt pretty good about it. He, he was looking good, um, hmm. you know. Yeah. Well, hey, you, you say 375 here with the tracking conditions they're having in Dyersburg this weekend, and how dry it is. 375 actually puts you up pretty pretty near the top as far as total scores go on Thursday night. Yeah, it was it was good. Like, that's where we were sitting, and then we ended up taking a hundred and a quarter pump. Okay. Uh, he he got treated again, and he actually he left the tree. So we took a hundred and a quarter pump on that. And uh, he he come back and covered himself at the very end of the cast. He treated another coon, uh, one point one two miles in there, and Ooh. that gave us a total score of four hundred. So uh, tied for high scoring dog oh, Thursday night. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Yeah. So then uh, uh, moving on to uh, to Friday night's quarterfinal cast, you were there in the in the top twenty three. Then how would that cast go? Who'd you draw out with, and how'd that going to go? Uh, man, I was nervous. I was shaking like a leaf on a tree. Uh, I drew out with the uh, the hot country's babe, um, a dog named Queen. And uh, Karma, the money's credit Karma. Yep. Uh, drew all three of them. and uh, Tough cast. It, it was a tough cast. You know, I've heard good things about all three of those dogs, and obviously they're in the top 23 for a reason. Yeah. Um, I knew we were going to have to score on some coons. We were going to have to do it quick. Um, Jed, he did, he did what he does. He sunk in there deep about a half mile and treated one by himself. Um, and when he got treed, uh, Babe actually got treed back towards the truck where he cut him loose. And uh, Jed, I was able to recut, and he went right back straight towards her and cut in. And honestly, Trevor, I, I thought he covered her. And I, I haven't seen the dog do it in the short amount of time I had him, but I didn't want to tree him in because the tree was dead. I didn't want to take any minus sure. uh, leading the cast like that. 
And so we walked to a couple other dogs that were treed and we ended up going over to Babe. Um, and we get in there and, and by happenstance, they were split about 40 yards. So I, I had to tree Jed in at that point. Um, and the queen dog, she'd got treated about six tenths of a mile the opposite direction. So I had to sit at Jed's tree for 37 minutes uh, during that cast, yeah. just wondering what was going on. I, I didn't know. Um, yeah. And, you know, I don't, I don't like to take chances on things. I like my dog to be on the ground working. So yeah. that was a long 37 minutes for me. Absolutely. Um, ended up, he, he, didn't, he didn't need that coon. Um, we ended up winning with 175 plus on that. And uh, it, it was good cats. We had a great judge. We had a great guide. Everything went smoothly. So. Perfect. Yeah, so then we got into the late round on Friday, and we actually, like we talked about, tracking conditions here in Dyersburg have been tough. Uh, we, uh, we had a couple dead casts, and it kind of messed with the format of the event that we had originally planned. You know, we are supposed to have seven uh, semifinalists on that night, and we actually got down to five as we were getting in late on Friday night, and we were looking at a kind of a two, dog, or a two cast late on Friday night, a three dog, three dog cast, a two dog cast, and with a couple dead casts we'd had already early, late, you know, you're kind of worried that we're we're taking the chance here of uh, crowning a world champion at about 5 a.m. while most people are in bed and unaware of, of what's going on. And and uh, after a lot of discussions with a lot of different people, we pulled the five the five handlers back here and had a discussion about uh, possibly uh, a different kind of format where you kind of drew numbers for uh, for a buy and then a couple hunt to advance to the final cast. And uh, uh, talk to me a little bit about about that thought process for you because it had to be a unanimous decision by the handlers or else we were going to hunt a three dog cast and a two dog cast on that late round. Yeah. You know, um, I think I was one of the quieter ones during that thing. I had a lot going on. Uh, I don't own a hair on the dog. I'm, right. I'm hunting for two, two fine gentlemen who own him. I got to think about what they would want to do. Sure. Um, I know the caliber of dogs that we were up against. Um, anybody had a chance to win. Um, I wanted to look at, at what UKC had going on here. Um, I really, I've said it time and time again, and I'll say it again here on the podcast that you guys really put on a top notch event and, you know, you guys have a lot invested in this event. You have a lot going on behind the scenes that people don't know, and they don't know how expensive this stuff is. Um, and I, I really wanted to see the Coonhound world portrayed in a positive light. And I wanted to see the media crew be here on Saturday. I wanted to see everybody get to see a world champion crowned. Um, you know, that mean, that means more to me than the most of it. And if it meant that I needed to do what I had to do and, and, you know, go out and if I took, take a chance on drawing, then, then that's what I had to do. Cause you know, I, I have bet on Jed since day one here I, in my top five pickems. I picked yeah, myself, you, you know, go. if you can't bet on yourself, you can't, nobody can else can bet on you. Yeah. So I, I felt like I had a dog that, that could compete. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, I think I looked at you and I said, you know, I, you know, I'm going to go hunting because I'm the worst <laughs> gambler in the, in the history of gambling. And my dog's name in PKC is no gamble Jed. I said, this is not going to work out well. I said, I will draw one of those cards that has to go hunting. And, and sure enough, I did. And, uh, you know, I drew Mr. Kurt Aaron and we went out to the woods and he's packing a, he's packing a mighty fine hound. And, you know, we, we, we did what we could do. Jed made four trees. Um, as good as he's been looking, I can't, I can't say that he didn't have four four coons there one tree i didn't like but the three of them i felt pretty good on just the woods we went to was a little thick in the canopy it was beautiful to walk which is what i've had all weekend down here in dyersburg you couldn't ask for prettier walking conditions uh the canopy was just a little thick so i, I couldn't get nothing shined um kurt was able to find his coon and you know the, the dog that treed the coon won the cast which is how it should be and uh congratulations to him and the other three dogs that are in it sleepy jenna and uh hawk you know yeah. i know i know at least uh hawk jenna and kurt their dog Whitey, you know, all three of those guys, they, they own those dogs. They've trained them. They've, they've done the winning. So for them to be in the cast in the finals with the dog, they've put the legwork in. It, it's got to be special for them, you know. As much as I wanted to be there, I want, it, I want right now to be in that four-dog cast tonight. I, I just got Jed two weeks ago. I don't own him. I don't, I don't have the connection to that dog that they have. So congrats to them and props yeah. to them for being in there. Could, couldn't say it better myself, Bryce. And uh... – I think what you're, you're you're portraying a final cast there, where you made four circle trees yourself, but also Whitey made at least two or three circle he trees did. himself. Yeah. So you guys made seven or eight trees through the night and saw one coon. Yeah. So you guys were that close away for, or you know, that close yeah. to being a dead cast, and that's a situation that would ultimately lead to possibly a world champion being crowned on Friday night. So right. Uh, yeah. That j just that close to it, but to back up a little bit, you talking about uh kind of mainstreaming coon hunting this live show production that we're doing tonight here on saturday night for the final cast you 
feel particularly strong about it because you've been a major part of that. And as I say that I, before I even met you, I had watched you on uh, the Nightlife Kennel YouTube page of some of the hunts and different things that you did. And so you have a major part of that. You feel like you got some skin in the game in that. Yeah, I do. I, I know what goes into this. Um, you know, my buddy Nick Gillen and I, we did Nightlife Kennel for a long time. Um, it's a YouTube channel that Nick Gillen runs. And it, it's faded off here recently. You know, we both got super busy. And the time and effort that it takes to put those those videos together, even if it's just, a, you know, a 20-minute video, there is hours of right. work between filming little segments and editing and making sure everything's right and staging and planning. There's a ton that goes into it. So I know what you guys are doing here. I, I know what you're trying to do. Um, and it is. It's something that I feel po I feel passionate about. Like the podcast, I love it. I, I love it. I love the, um, you know, the media coverage. If the sport needs anything right now, it's to have a positive light. And UKC is doing one heck of a job with it. And, you know, I, I'm honored, honestly, to be here in, in the top five. Um, I, I can't complain. I, I can't. I want to be in there hunting tonight so bad. But to see what you guys are doing, I'll be watching it live, you know, and I'll be rooting on a couple of my buddies in there. So. Absolutely. It's good. Well, Bryce, man, we sure appreciate you being here. I want to congratulate you again on a fifth place finish at the Coonhound World Championship, but also on just a great month altogether with wins at the Dual Championship and Autumn Oaks, too. Uh, you and Jed were a winner. I know Jed's not in the kennel currently, but you'll find another one. You always seem to find your way back to the winner's circle, and uh, I just want to wish you luck and uh, appreciate you sitting down with me. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Saturday afternoon, I had a chance to sit down with our first-round bench show judge, Lori Galbraith. Uh, she was... Uh, talking about uh, bow hunting the next morning. Bow season is uh, open up the same day as the World Championship Finals, but her next uh, thing that she was getting ready to do is go sit in a bow stand, but uh, she talked about that a little bit. But here's Lori. Good afternoon, Lori. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. good. Saturday afternoon at the World Championship here in Dyersburg, yes. Tennessee. Yes. You weren't here showing dogs today, were you? Nope, nope. So uh, you were here judging for us today, so uh, we appreciate that first thank and foremost. You, thank so, you, thank you. Did you enjoy it? I did, I did, very much so. It's been a nice year to be just kind of doing our own thing, and you it was have, nice. Yeah, to, you've kind of strayed away from the dogs a little bit. I have, for, yeah. I have. We're just spending more time with family yeah. and uh, my, and spending more time with my husband. So, yeah. um, but, Talking about Mike. Yes, yeah. talking about Mike, but uh, yeah, it's been really nice being able to to get an opportunity to see the dogs again, to put my hands on the dogs again, and and really kind of a different different side of it. But just to, I still love it. Yeah. I still love the dogs, yeah. and it's just an opportunity of a lifetime to yeah. get to, so to see them all. What do you do to prepare yourself for like for this show? Did you do a little bit of homework, probably? Um, I brushed up on my breed standards, of mm -hmm. course, since it has been a year since I've shown. Um, and I also, you know, I really didn't do a whole lot of social media. I tried to stay away mm -hmm. from looking at photos of folks' mm -hmm. dogs and yeah. any of the live streams that people did on the different, yeah. uh, you know, social medias. I really tried to do that. I wanted to yeah. give the dogs their day today and give them that opportunity. So, Well, I thought you did a wonderful job Thank out you. there. So uh, your thoughts on some of the dogs you saw going th uh, through all of them today? You know, every dog did very well. You know, of course, there were some that just really stood out for me. I love movement. I, yeah, I'm, you know, it was real evident in the show today. I, there were several yeah. I took down and wanted yeah. to see again. Yeah. Um, I just love movement. I want to see the dogs because when we look at the standards, we're judging for a dog that can hold up for what it's bred to mm -hmm. do. And that's very important to me. So although, yes, I'd love to see them on the bench and, and see them right there and, you know, and stand and what they're doing. But but the movement is very important. And there were just so many that stood out. Yeah. But I have to say, I have to agree with Alan that black and tan was just amazing. He was nice. He was. He was. I remember him from I was telling Val and I remember him from a couple of years ago at the Winter mm -hmm. Classic. I'm in the hunt office all day long. Didn't get to watch the show. Got down on the on the arena floor mm -hmm. there. And he was standing there. There was a black and tan male down there. And I kind of caught my eye. And I asked somebody about him. What dog is that? That's a nice dog. And they said, well, he just won the show. Yeah. And it was this same dog. But yeah. He was, he was, I remember he was the year nice he won. Then. Yeah. It's, you know, when you see them and they just, they move well, you get them up there and everything. It, it's just, it's almost like poetry yeah. to see it. And it's yeah. beautiful. It really is. Yeah. So uh, you've judged quite a few shows. This mm -hmm. was probably your your first world show to judge for us, yes. obviously. Yes, yeah. it is. 
Yeah. So what what was the other the winter classic? Winter classic. You did judge yes. the winter yes. classic. So yeah. Well, uh, we really appreciate you stopping in here. Thanks I don't so want to much. take much of your time. I know you want to head back to Arkansas here, but uh, just wanted to thank you for uh, for judging the show for us, and I hope you really enjoyed it. And uh, I did. And, uh, I did. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity, you know, from UKC. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alan. On Saturday afternoon, after the bench show Hustle and Bustle, I was able to pull in Miss Beth Jenkins, and we were able to talk about the run that her and her Redbone male Skylines Push My Luck are on. I hope you enjoy this interview with Beth. Beth, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good. We're here on Saturday afternoon. The bench show just ended, and, uh, your red bone male pushed my luck. He just ended up uh, winning the the red bone male part of the show and just got edged out by the black and tan there in the finals. But man, that dog's had quite a year. He has. It's been amazing. Yeah. So this is just kind of the, the, his last win in a whole whole line of wins this year, starting out at Grand American, right, with a couple uh, couple wins at Grand American. Yes, he ended up winning champion male both days and ended up winning overall. Yeah, and then can you just talk talk about some of his major event wins this year? Um, he obviously won overall at Grand American, and then at Winter Classic, he was still a champion, and he won champion male. Um, then we've won at a couple state shows this year. We've been running the Prina race, and right now he is leading it, and now he won at Oaks a couple weekends ago, won national grand champion Redbone male, or Redbone breed, sorry, Yeah. and then world champion Redbone male yeah. this year. Absolutely. What a year. <laughs> What a year. And you mentioned the uh, the Purina race. He's, of course, on top of it. But also our top 10 bench show standings, he's uh, uh, far and away the leader there with over 400 points currently and just adding to that tally. And we're getting here close to the end of it, so I think he's got his spot wrapped up he, pretty he well. Does. <laughs> <laughs> he's safe. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just an exceptional male, and it seems like it, that's under a whole barrage of different uh, judges that we've appointed and people all over the country. You've done well all over the country with him. Uh, so uh, some of the other hands, you have some other hands that are doing pretty well though as as well, right? I've got a, quite a few dogs, um, some walkers, just added a blue tick, a yeah. um, little bit of everything. Diversifying the kennel a little <laughs> yes. bit, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been a, a heck of a year for you so far. Uh, I, I don't know, throughout the year, is there a couple events that kind of stand out to you that you prefer going to more than others? Autumn Oaks. You, yeah. you, you The whole experience is amazing. Just being there and hanging out with everybody and seeing all the beautiful dogs, it it's pretty special. It helps whenever you have mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of success there to kind of add to yes. the camaraderie. I always see you guys rolling around <laughs> with a golf cart. You yes. always hit me. You always almost hit me a couple times a day. It seems like. <laughs> but it, we aren't um, good drivers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've never hit me, so Yet. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. <laughs> uh, but uh, hey, we appreciate you being here at the World mm -hmm. Championship and. Uh, and like I said, uh, the the luck dog, and I don't know what you call him. But what do luck. You, luck. Okay, yep. so he's he's, uh, he's still young yet, just three years old, right? He'll be three in December. Oh, he's just two yet. Yeah. Wow. He's, so he's a baby. Yeah, we talked about him a little bit on this podcast, and we've talked about how how sometimes it seems like dogs, like we talk about Wendy. I know mm -hmm. you are, are invested in Wendy now, uh, Natalie's dog that you guys just yes. kind of bought into that went on a stretch there of major event wins, the Dibs dog. Yep. Uh, Christina Officer and Legacy, and then kind of this year seems like Luck is the one who you see in every single spread. And do you think he just came into his own this year, or are you just starting to push him? Or starting to push him? Um, I had shown him selectively um, beforehand, and this year when he won Grand American, we said, "Well, let's try this Perina race," and he picked up the top ten points and yeah. has won at all the majors, which is. That was a goal, so I'm yeah. pretty excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you've positioned your well in both of those, and it looks like you're going to have an opportunity to cash a couple of checks come this uh, early next year <laughs> in January and February at uh, Grand American yes. and Winter Classic, respectfully. So uh, I, hey, I appreciate you taking time. I know Saturday is a busy, busy day at the World Championship. From early in the morning, we're here. They're wrapping up everything. Just got your picture taken, and you're ready to hit the road back to Virginia. That's right. <laughs> you're a long ways from home. It is. It's a, it's a long ways. Well, hey, we appreciate you always coming to our events mm -hmm. and supporting us. you always mm -hmm. got a good dog on the end of your mm -hmm. lead, and uh, wish you luck in, with what you got in your future. Thank you. I appreciate it. On Saturday afternoon, just before our World Championship final cast, I was able to talk to Mr. Buzz Lynch about Whitey and about Rat Attack a little bit. Hope you enjoy this interview with Buzz Lynch. We are here on Saturday evening waiting on the final cast of the World Hunt, and I have one of the owners of the final dogs left in the hunt, Mr. Buzz Lynch. Buzz, how are you doing today? 
I'm doing. I don't know how about how good, but I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you and Kurt Aaron are partners on this uh, Bozo Stylish Whitey male dog. Can you tell me a little bit about Whitey? Ah, I, I raised him. You know, what I mean, like that, and had the litter, and we fooled with him, and he picked him out over the rest of them. And anyway, like that, and the old dog's done good. He started off good, and he ain't looked back. Yeah. Obviously, one thing about Whitey is out of uh, Rat Attack, the iconic Rat Attack semen. Yeah. Uh, so, so you was that your uh, female that you crossed him on, or is it just no, a female you thought was worthy? Angie Fertel. Okay. He Pretty nice a, female. Yeah. Well, it was a hairy female, and she was known for being a real good track dog. And that's what I try to look for, you know. Yeah, going back 20 years now, people talk about how rat and hairy dogs kind of cross well on each other. Yep. That was one of the better crosses. Yeah. So, so you, so you guys got in the final four last night. So it'd be hunting tonight for the world championship. Have you made it this far before? Not in the UKC. Yeah. So this should be your first final cast in the world championship, huh? Yep. In how the you, UKC. How you feeling today? I feel all right. I'm knocking as normal. <laughs> you, how's your handler feeling today? Oh, I don't know about that now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Buzz, you're you're a, a legend of the sport, and uh, obviously uh, Whitey's the next in line of a long line of long line of dogs. Uh, how does he compare with some of the ones you've had in the past? He's action packed like a lot of rat dogs, and he is one of the better ones now. He's an outstanding track dog, is he? And he and he's usually you know mean pretty good about having a coon when he treats. First yeah. strike dog, the first tree dog, and usually off by himself. So, so you said you, you he was born at your place, kind of, or yeah. he, you raised him. Yeah. When did he get up to Missouri? I carried him up there when they were about five or six months old. I carried like five of them, and he started weeding through them. You know, say which one he liked the best. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting to me. Uh, Northern Missouri, where Kurt's at, is one of the more plentiful coon populations in the country. And we get down here to Dyersburg, Tennessee. It's a little bit different, obviously, yeah. a little bit thinner coon population, I'd say. But he seems to have excelled this week. Yeah, I mean, y'all got enough coons though down here. Yeah, you know how that is. You got to have a good guide. I don't care where you go. Yeah, yeah. It seems like he's he uh, he had a really good weekend at the zones to make it here. He looked good on Friday night, and he put on a show early last night. And I know late last night they kind of had a bit of a. A nail biter made three or, or sorry made seven or eight trees and finally saw the coon in one of them and yeah. uh, just just the uh, canopies are still so thick so much foliage still out there and that's a that's uh another obstacle that they're having to overcome this weekend but uh uh I, are you from around here around dyersburg here somewhere no or? i'm from um ran out of dixon tennessee i'm about i'm about 100 miles east here southeast so you're not too far off no yeah, so hey, we're kind of tickled. This is the first time the UKC World Championships been in West Tennessee. Obviously, it's been in uh, Rogersville and uh, Springfield and Murfreesboro, but as far as getting over here on the west half of the state, and I think they've done a pretty good job putting this event on. Yeah, they have done good, really, and it kind of surprised me them having it down here. Yeah, I got it a final cast when they had the UKC World Hunt at Murfreesboro. Okay, yeah, absolutely. I did not know that. I lived right out of Murfreesboro back then. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, I know we got a lot going on this evening. We got a we got a final castle world championship. Man, you're both wanting to go watch this Tennessee Florida football game, and we got we got some time to kill. But I appreciate you taking some time out of your busy yeah. day. Uh, people will enjoy hearing from you. Like I said, you're a legend of the sport. You've had a big impact on not only the tree and walker breed, but on coon hunting uh, in general. Appreciate it. Uh, have appreciate a good one, it. Buzz, and good luck right. to you guys yeah. tonight. If you're trying to contact UKC, don't wait on hold. Use the online chat feature on ukcdogs.com. This year's World Finals, we had quite a few stud and uh, stud dogs and, and dams that had multiple dogs in the finals, and I figured we may as well give them a little heyday ahead of my next interview that I had. Uh, but first, let's talk about the one dog uh, that was in that had four pups in the top 100 of the World Championship. And that was old Gray's Rackham Willie. Yeah, man, that how how uh, just kudos to J.R. Gray. What a breeding program he has with that dog. Obviously a world champion, but yeah, Willie's insane scar was one of those one of his four pups that was in the hunt. And that dog is off of Willie, and then also uh, another world champion, uh, Lane Denny's Emmy female. Uh, we actually had six sires who ended up having three pups in the world in the top hundred of the world finals. Uh, that was Walston's Blue Big Country. Uh, R and R's knee show cuz, big money, money maxed out or little money as he calls him, backwater bone collector, and somewhere stylish coma. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's just amazing. You know, all those sires and kudos again to all those sire owners and breeders. You know, but that's a that's a big thing, and I love talking about breeders and sires and things like that. And uh, this is just a uh, it's a it's amazing. You know, any dog that has multiple dogs in the, in a world finals like that is deserves uh, recognition and attention to it. And here, like I said, we had four. Uh, one dog with four and these other six with three of them just amazing you know big country one of the biggest names in the blue tick breed right now and not just breeding blue ticks but there's a lot of people crossing up on him you know in crossbreds uh but yeah that neosho cuz you know uh all three puffs out of him made a run in the finals yeah you know, at least the, yep. at least one a cast yep and you know uh, money maxed out one of kevin cable's uh, dogs he doesn't own him anymore had a lot of success with that dog uh, you know, there's uh, three three dogs. You know, it's it's notable to mention a couple of females there, Randy Smith and Rick Strauser, who have won the, the world championship before. Lone Pine uh, Million Dollar Lady was one of those offspring. And uh, also uh, uh, Lone Pine Million Dollar Bank, uh, male and female there off of Money Maxed Out. Uh, bone, backwater Bone Collector Doug Compton out of Arkansas. That's a very recognizable uh, sire, but here again, yeah, three pups in the in the final, and then some somewhere stylish coma Darian Wiseman out of Missouri. Uh, yeah, kudos to all those uh, breeders. Yeah, just a a handful of them that also sired two dogs and made it the finals, which is also a huge accomplishment. Of uh, uh, English dog Stone Cold Steel Jim Ridge and Chris Skirth on that dog, uh, stylish little Whitey Dylan Eberly owns that dog over in Ohio. Ely's Coon Hollow on the Fritz, Tim, e Tim Ely over in PA, both of those made it to the finals. And then uh, uh, Bad Habit Sam, ex-bred dog. Yeah. Caleb Wilson currently owns that dog in South Carolina. Yeah, Albert Ashcraft had one of uh, Sambo's pups in it, uh, Nighttime Hurricane, and the other one is that Bad Habits Preacher Man uh, that Caleb Griffin had in there, so yeah. Yeah, so hey, we talked about a lot of the sires who had multiple pups in, and I was actually able to pull Kevin Cable, who, own, who owns Big Money and, and owned Little Money and did, had a lot of success with them. Pull, uh, and I was able to pull him in and talk about that a little bit, about how it feels to have six pups out of his stock of dogs in the finals. So here's my interview with Kevin. Kevin, how you doing, bud? Pretty good. How are you? Good, good. Uh, we're here on Friday evening. We just uh, kind of did our cash drawouts for the quarterfinals of the World Championship. You got a little bit of money here with you, right? Yep. Yeah, so tell me a little about a little bit of money. He's uh, he's kind of been winning consistently for you for the past two years, seems like, in some of the bigger events that we have. Yeah, I've just kind of took him to some of the major events in UKC. I've got him in a top 16 two years in a row at Autumn Oaks. Uh, he was one of the youngest Grand Knights for a while, and then I think he's a two-time Grand. Yeah. he uh, he Was he the one you had in the top 100 at TOC? Yes, had him top 100 at TOC, And then you had TOC, uh, top 100 of the world. Well, your top 23 of the world right now was still some stuff to go this year. Was he in the world last year? No. They you hunted uh, Echo. Echo in the world last year. Okay, yep. so I, knew, I remembered you being there, so. Yeah, so a little bit. What's he? He's out of uh, Little he's, Money? He's off of Little Money, and he's off of a Bellers and Female, that uh, Dual Murphy and uh, Jeremy Jones own. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to have a chance to talk with you because it's kind of impressive from a breeder standpoint here this weekend for you specifically, not just having uh, a couple pups out of one dog or one sire, but a couple of your sires, a couple generations of your sires. You got three pups this weekend uh, out of Big Money in the top 100 and then three out of Little Money. Uh, how does that make you kind of feel as a breeder? It's pretty good. It's it's good to see stuff like that because even if you're if even if you don't do good, you're still seeing dogs you know that you've bred and raised and that are reproducing. Yeah. So uh, and uh, you you just before we got on here, you said the little money uh, crosses in particular. Those are a couple that you had a pretty big hand in in yep, making I, crosses on. I made all them crosses right before I sold him. I sold him a year and a half ago uh, uh, to Leon, and them were some of the last crosses that I done. Yeah. And of course, with big money, and then you had bank coming up, and you yep. got some younger dogs you're doing that can't have that many stud dogs. That's a lot no, of phone ringing. It, it was it was hard to keep up with, and I kind of big money. He's been nervous since he's been young, which little money has been too. But big money had a little bit more sentimental value, so we were going to keep him, and yep. so I kind of just moved on. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, let's talk a little bit about the world championship real quick. Uh, you got you were the top you and little bit were the top uh, top dogs in the pick 'em. 40% of people that put uh, casted votes picked a little bit, which is impressive in and of, of itself. And then you ended up uh, kind of living up to the the hype last night in round one, winning your cast. Tell me a little bit about your cast last night. Uh, it kind of started off slow. A bit got struck for 100, and uh, the ice dog got struck for 75, and a few dogs took some minus, and then ice tree and had a coon. And then uh, 
pulled off air and I treed bit through the country about six tenths. Uh, went to him. He was on a big viney mess and couldn't really get a light in it because it was so thick and a circle tree and pulled off air and some other dogs got treed and they took some more minus and they was right back by the truck and got treed again. We went and scored that tree and it had a circle tree and I struck bit about six tenths and we walked away from him. We walked back to the last place we heard him and I got him treed in right out of a mile. Went to him. He had a coon. Yeah. And that's what won the cast. Yeah, I know. Just talking to a lot of people around here, and they know, obviously, uh, central and northern Indiana, there's a lot of coons around there, and mm. there's a lot of ag, and there's a lot of dogs that excel up there running edges or running fence rows, but where you hunt at specifically in your woods, you hunt big timber, big open timber, recutting everywhere, and that's kind of similar to the hunting that they have down here in West Tennessee, and I thought that was kind of a big factor for people picking you. Yeah, normally my dogs, I, I like a type of dog that goes till they find a coon, don't make many mistakes. You don't have much down downtime with them, but they're traveling, looking for coons they can tree. Yeah. You're about to head out with your cast here in round two. Have you made it this far in the world hunt before in a UKC world uh, hunt? No, this is actually only the second time. I hunted last year in your world hunt, got in the top 100, then hunted this year. Yeah. It's the only times I've ever entered in it. Yeah. So so now you've kind of consistently been in the, in the run at Autumn Oaks and TOC in the world. Like you said, you you hit those kind of major events that we have. Is there one that you kind of like more than the others right now, or they all uh, kind of have their their ups and downs probably well there I, I like the format and all of them you know elimination style and yeah. uh i definitely like how they switched oaks where it's elimination style kind of makes it more of an even playing field for everybody yeah, yeah absolutely well you got a tough cast tonight but they're all tough tonight so uh yep. here in the next couple uh couple hours we'll find out uh if little bit's got some more run in him but i appreciate you coming and sitting down with me uh, congratulations on being in the top 23 of the world congratulations on the breeding uh stuff that you're doing with with all your stud dogs and with your line of dogs and just doing an awesome job for the sport. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Kevin. Uh, just done a lot for the Coonhound world and a good guy. Uh, we talked about all the sires, but there was also a few dams that had multiple pups in the finals, right? Yeah, and, and a couple that we want to recognize. We uh, recognize them on Thursday night there in the opening ceremonies, but those were, uh, th we had three different dams that had multiple pups in the hunt. Uh, one was Smith and Strang's Lone Pine Million Dollar Baby, Randy Smith and Tom Strang out of Pennsylvania. They had two pups in there. And then another one was Stylish Wind No Name. That is owned by Landon Hinchcliffe out of Ohio. Had two uh, pups in the in the top 100. And then also uh, World Night Champion uh, Spavanaugh Creek Insane Emmy, Lane Denny and uh, Carl Reed out of Oklahoma. Uh, Emmy had two pups that were in the in the finals. Uh, two so, pups out of two different males. She's a, yeah. seems to be reproducing. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, kudos to those uh, dam owners. Yeah, man, we we sure hope you've enjoyed these interviews that we've done, and and we hope you've enjoyed uh, both parts of our world championship coverage here. Uh, uh, but uh, an event like the world championship isn't possible without saying a lot of thank yous to our our partners and sponsors that make an event like this possible. And of course, we're going to talk about our partners. Uh, we have Yukonuba, the official performance dog nutrition partner of UKC. Uh, since they've came on board, they've gave us a lot of uh, their, their partnership has gave us a lot of flexibility to try different things, and uh, and we sure appreciate all that they've done for us. They, there was a ton of dog food up there in front of the stage that we handed out to winners all weekend. Yeah, and then some of our sponsors, Bright Eyes, was another one. You saw the twenty lights we had all up there in a row. Uh, Ray Conrad uh, did everybody in the top twenty in the night hunt got a Bright Eyes light, and we really thank Ray for his. Uh, uh, sponsorship and support of United Kennel Club and our world championship. GT's, uh, Gary Beatty out of Tennessee. He sponsors all of our events. Uh, so it, thank him as well for everything. Uh, Razor, Yoder, Nylon. Uh, it gave the vests this year for the top 100. Yep. How People cool was that? Them. You did. I was handing them out and people were trying to buy them from me. I was like, we only have enough to hand out here. That's right. And I had a few people ask me if we had any extras as well, you know, so a couple of them, I told them to go on his website. He's got them on there as well. And we saw a bunch of hunters that were there. He's got them outfitted on that night be, uh, and we're wearing them on that hunt. Already. Old Irvin Sutton was wearing his he around. Sure he sure liked it. He, he was strutting around like a little rooster, wasn't he, with <laughs> he, his on? He liked it. He liked it. So thank you to Johnny and Marty for and uh, Jacob Wyatt for that that. Uh, sponsorship thing. yeah and then uh tier one custom calls we talked about that a little bit uh that is lane denny and um uh, and tyler compton uh sponsors of this event and you know you think okay how odd is that a we have a sponsor and then we have uh one of those owners of that uh, company wins the hunt you know but uh that's just ironic how ironic it is i guess tier one custom calls the squalor of 
world champions. There's yeah. your new, there's your new tagline. <laughs> yeah. And just yeah. real quick, our, our final partner, uh, our newest partner, Dogtra, the official GPS caller partner of UKC. Uh, I sure hope you guys enjoy your doctors that you got as much as I'm enjoying mine right now. Great stuff for the Pathfinder too. Um, and, and obviously we, we talked a little bit about our field reps, but we would be remiss not to mention our staff for this event. We had a great staff there and having a good staff there sure makes your and my life a lot easier, right? Um, real quick, me and you get a ton of credit for these events and we, we put in a lot of work, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes who, who don't stand up on stage or, or get on the social media platforms or do a podcast and, uh, one of them who came on uh, came into her new job on uh, part of a, the national events team is Nicole Sedlecki. You'll see her at all of her major events. And since she's been on board, she has elevated uh, Coonhound major events, in my opinion. She has absolutely a lot to do has. With it. Absolutely has. And we give, I want to give so much credit to Nicole. Yes. She is, she's done so much for you and I. And at these events, she, she understands the vision that we have for a lot of these. And she has made a lot of things happen. And like you said, she is, she is, solely responsible for the elevation that that we've seen in the last couple of years and a lot of that has to do with her yeah and, and the now, effort she's put into it and all the work she's done and now she has a uh, megan the past year or so helping her on that major events team and megan is always very helpful for us and she makes our life easier yeah. too you're not going to find any more anybody that's more positive than megan probably get her a couple of diet cokes and she's ready to roll <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then our uh our media team that was there of course we had annie who's the who's the director of the media operations who oversees it all. Uh, we always appreciate all that Annie does for us. Um, Kyle, our social media guy, but also just always there to lend a helping hand no matter what you need. And we need any of those uh, website numbers or anything like that. He has he has all that for us, and it's, and it's always cool to see some of the numbers and everything that he comes up with. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, of course, Bailey, uh, Bailey is part of that team as well. And she was there. She did a lot of the live show stuff, but leading up to the event, we put her to work. She, she prints out all of our stuff for us as far as the paperwork and graphics and making things look, she, uh, she legit. does, she does. And she is responsible for all the graphics you saw on the live stream footage, you know, of the dog names and the people names and all that stuff. She's the one that comes up with all those nice graphics. And then let's talk about our live show team a little bit. Uh, Shannon Nardi, of course, uh, works for UKC, and she does an awesome job uh, putting on these productions for us. And she has her whole team there. Uh, you got uh, her brother, Hop, that's always there working the camera and helping edit uh, footage and stuff. You have uh, Rick and Jeff, who you've worked with more closely than me. I'm usually in the woods when you're in there working uh, directly with the production team, so you maybe want to talk more about those guys. Yeah, there. Rick is Rick Davis. is he's He lives in Little Rock, Arkansas or whatever, but this is what he does for a living, goes around. He's a, a cameraman for hire is what he does. And, and didn't uh, – you know, those guys don't really brag about what it is they do, and, and some of the job assignments that they get is uh, is amazing. You know, uh, whether it be 60 Minutes or, or doing an NFL draft or uh, uh, interviewing uh, Elvis Presley's daughter or, you know, right after the World Championship, his next job assignment was the hurricane coming in down in Florida. So he left the World Championship to Jeez. go cover that. Yeah, and then of course uh, Brandon Fiend, who who's gone on out with me on multiple final casts. Poor Brandon and Keegan, they they get put through some do some doozies sometimes. We go on some uh, the the final casts are never easy. They're always wide hunting dogs who get split, and uh, we do some walk in, and they're always carrying all their equipment. What and a everything. tough kid! What a tough kid, you know. But he came he, when he came walking into the uh, uh, into the headquarters there after the hunt was over. You could tell he was. He was, uh, he, he probably had about all he could handle. I think <laughs> it was a long night for yeah. sure. And then real quick, our, our, uh, on air personalities, Rick stretch and Steve Burkholder, man, two couldn't ask for a better duo of people to give, to entertain people for hours at a time. Yeah. And I think folks need to also, and I think they do, you know, this, uh, doing that job is, is something new for, for all of us and them as well, but uh, they are really, they've really done an outstanding job and just getting better and better. Last and least, the last people I want to thank is is all of you people out there listening to this podcast and also to all of you who attend our events, who compete for our world championship, for our tournament champions, Autumn Oaks Winter Classic. Uh, without you, none of this is possible, and we sure appreciate you. And again, of the Dyer County Coon Club, Chad Smith, and all the whole club for, for stepping up to this, making helping us make it what it was. Yeah. And we hope you enter. We hope that you enjoyed this uh, UKC World Coonhound coverage. This is part two of one. Be sure to look, go back and listen to part one if you missed that. And uh, 
We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and to like and follow UKC Hunting Ops on Facebook and Instagram.